I'm Molly and I'm here to face my fear of falling on lead. I've been climbing regularly for just over six months now and I'm living in my van with my partner Philip. When we met, I taught him how to surf and he taught me how to climb. And although the ocean will always be where my heart belongs, recently the mountains have been constantly pulling me back to them. <laughs> we spent six months in the Blue Mountains. The start of the Blue Mountains was when I first started climbing regularly. My goal for the Blue Mountains was to climb grade 22, which I gradually built up to. I was very happy about that. We are now in the Grampians, and my goal for the Grampians is to climb a grade 23. To get here, we travelled south along the cold and wild southeast coast. We drove along dirt roads searching for waves, dived and spearfished for food, and cooked our catch on the fire, which kept us warm at the same time. Sometimes it felt like we had a whole world to ourselves. In the living room, in the sitting room, I will wait for you in the hollow I have you. Like a dark and black. After our fingers had grown some skin back and our bodies had loosened up again, we headed inland and arrived at the Grampians National Park. The Grampians are vast and remote. Kangaroos and emus roam the land and eagles soar above the cliff lines. In any kind of way, what did the spirit say? So far, I tried a 23 that was slightly overhanging and I really struggled that day because I had really bad headspace. I'm terrified of swinging more so than anything when I'm falling and it was a traverse to a dyno, which was not the best choice of a 23 project. Really bad headspace, freaked out, felt really frazzled, cried a lot <laughs> and came back down. So I would love to go back and give that another shot with a braver brain. Frustratingly, my head is really holding me back. I'm terrified of falling on lead. And even though a quick burst of bravery can get me through, Sometimes a day at the crag can end up being more emotionally exhausting than enjoyable. But I'm addicted to the challenge. Philip pushes me to lead as much as possible, but sometimes after a lot of frazzling days, it's relieving to spend a day just seconding some of his climbs. <coughs> Luckily for me, I spend my days surrounded with inspiring people who dedicate most of their time to climbing, and I'm grateful that I can learn so much from them. Here's Mattia going for the on-site of a grade 27 trad climb. I find that watching others climb really fuels my desire to overcome my fear, and basically to just get on with it. The only way to improve at something is to keep trying. Nice Mattia! Yay! 
So the next day we woke up to a cold and frosty morning with a light haze through the valley. We'd been reading the guidebook the night before and had decided on checking out a place called the Watchtower with a slabby grade 23. It was time to throw myself at the wall again and face my fears. This one here is called Boshanova, which I believe is a 7A in Europe. It's very slabby, tiny, tiny holds. Your feet are on little crystals and your hands are on little crystals and it's very, very balancy, which really suits my style of climbing. I came here just to play around on it and see if it was possible. I didn't think it would even be doable so I just thought I'd play around with it, get to the first bolt, but I actually managed to get the on-site which I was so happy, so happy about. Yeah, that's good. The last section is the run out, but I thought, well, I'm so close now, I have to keep going. And I was standing on a very tiny hold. My feet were a meter above the last bolt. And I was just shaking and shaking. I was shouting at my leg to stop shaking. Stop shaking. Stop shaking. Stop shaking. And eventually I waited it. And well, I had the confidence to wait it more and um, it stopped shaking and got to the top, got the on-site. Where do you write 
One of the beautiful parts of climbing is that it gives you a reason to venture to new parts of the world. It takes you off the beaten track and rewards you with endless challenges. Just a couple hours northwest of the Grampians National Park is Mount Arapiles. Here, the climbers collect at the pine trees at the base of the cliff. It's a home for adventurous trad climbing. Climbers from all around the country gather here in their vans or sleep in tents and hammocks. Anyway. You wake to the clinking of trad gear being packed for the day and the chatter of what everybody's about to climb. The smell of coffee wafts through the air. And from the camp at night, the cliff is scattered with the light of head torches still on the wall. For the time being, I'll stick around the mountains for just a little while longer. <laughs>